Hello, and welcome to the seventh video of my 10 part Breath of the Wild Any% Percent speedrunning tutorial series. In this video, we're going to go over the entire sixth segment of the run where we're finally leaving the Great Plateau and heading straight to the castle after having just acquired the paraglider. Unlike Plateau, the castle has a brief fork in the road between running with or without amiibos, and then there's two ways we can run through the castle, either with three ancient arrows or with six. If there's anything I go over that you don't understand how to follow along with, I've loaded the video description with links to other resources for this one, and if something should be outdated by the time you watch this video and I've made an updated addendum, a card linking you to the updated strats will appear in the upper right corner. And with that, let's begin. The segment begins while we're still at the Temple of Time after having just acquired the paraglider. You should be mashing B to get through the rest of King Rome's text boxes, and once he's finished up, several things can happen. No amiibo runners, and amiibo runners that have already scanned for fish can immediately set up a BLSS and take off from this ledge by tucking Link down into this corner by walking him in while holding ZL, and then turning the right field of view line past just to the right of this plus sign here. But amiibo runners that have not scanned for fish during the plateau portion should drop down over here and scan the amiibos, grab the fish, and then use this broken part of the wall right here to take off from. Which is also a decent backup spot in case you went for the BLSS on the top of the Temple of Time here, but it didn't work out and you had to drop down. Another popular and very consistent spot to take off from if you're ready to head straight to Castle is to climb up to the top of the Temple of Time set up your BLSS on this thin ledge here, and then jump and take off that way. But whichever spot you take off from, you'll take one of two paths towards the castle for amiibo or no amiibo. Amiibo runners will fly straight towards the castle, and no amiibo runners will take a quick detour to the left to grab some razor shrooms. I'll talk more about that in a moment. Once you're airborne and leaving Plateau, and as you're flying over Hyrule Field, adjust your camera angle and wiggle accordingly to get to top speed. The worst thing that could happen is dropping somewhere in the middle of Hyrule Field, which is sort of a brutal mistake, so be careful there. This is your longest flight and your straightest path, so it's good to get familiar with what it's like to build too much speed, because there's a limit and if you pass the speed cap, the game will slow length back down and we don't want that, especially the closer to the castle you get. You can tell when you're approaching the speed cap by noticing the triangular point on the minimap that represents Link's position. If it's moving ahead of center when you get freeze frame world loads, you're getting close. I also highly recommend just BLSSing around the overworld and playing with the speed cap and really paying attention to the comet's tail and the pattern that it creates. Notice how the pattern flow changes as you're approaching the top speed and get familiar with it. Alright, now no amiibo runners listen very closely and forget everything I've previously taught you about beetles and run the Great Plateau exactly the way an amiibo runner who does not scan fish before paraglider does, including throwing the spear away after you're done with the FDC on the top of the Temple of Time. The newest strategy in Breath of the Wild Any% percent speedrunning directly erases all beetle RNG and replaces your attack up elixir with an attack up meal of 4-5 to five cooked razor shrooms and makes the runs identical other than that. You can pick up 4 outside of Hyrule Field by BLSSing to the left after takeoff and flying over the Colosseum ruins here in this direction. You can use this mountain with a huge laser shot chunk taken out as a general guide as you continue flying a little bit more over to the left until you see these three apple trees in a row. Fly over and just past them and drop down here by these two trees and grab two razor shrooms from under the tree on the right. Then head up this way, and now either run a straight line to this other tree on the right of these two, or you can minimize the big choo-choo's spawning by running a line through this bush, and then approaching just to the right of the first tree before grabbing two more razor shrooms from the tree on the right again. Now quickly set up a BLSS by trapping the bomb in this little nook here in the shady spot of the rock like this, and you can take off from this texture here in the sunlight like this. Now get Link properly oriented and fly towards the castle. 
Whichever path you approach the castle from, you must make good time to beat the world loads, specifically for a gate that will block your way if you're too slow. But in my experience, BLSS has an extremely high unloaded gate consistency. Some may call it superstition, but my research shows that in order to help the game not load the gate nearly every time, whenever you have a run that gets this far, it's always a good idea before starting the next one to exit all the way out of the game to your Switch home dashboard and completely restart the game as opposed to only exiting to the title screen while the game is still continuously running to some degree. Anyway, as you arrive, drop the BLSS and have Link fall towards this entrance here. Detonate the bomb as you fall and pump the glider as necessary or possible, and I recommend not touching down on the ground until you're at least really close to the gate, if not all the way through, because if you're a little slower, sometimes the castle cutscene will play as soon as you touch down on the ground, and when it does, the castle will finish loading. If the gate is loaded when you arrive, you have two options to continue the run. One, you can do an extended shield jump to get inside, which is pretty tricky, and we have a lot to cover today, so I'd like to cover that back up strat in a future video. But for now, you can check out Speedrunner to Piers 3 Ancient Arrow Castle Walkthrough Ramble video. I've linked that in the description. He covers ESC about six minutes in. Option number two is much easier. Just run all the way around, also known as the Copium Route, which is very straightforward. You run down the path this way and destroy the Malice Eye if necessary with a bomb. Enter the only entrance there is over down here to the left, and if loads really got ahead of you, you can lift this gate with Cryonis. Go up the stairs to the left, make another left at the top and run down this hall and avoid the Lizalfos. Distract it with a bomb if necessary and make another left down the stairs and then make the only turn that you can make to the right right here. Now, when you get to this entryway, go to the left side of the path up this way and now you're on the other side of the gate as if you had entered from here. If you still have the spear, throw it away now. You've been done with it and you're about to pick up a much better weapon. And if Link is empty handed when you pick up a new weapon, he'll automatically equip the new one, saving you some menuing. Now that you're here, notice this break in the railing. This is a great place to jump off from and glide down towards this moblin. If you're fast enough, you may not be able to see everything though because it won't be loaded yet. If things aren't loaded and you're not comfortable, you can always force the loads by menuing quickly back and forth through the bow or your shield menus. Or, you can line up your shot with this campfire, which always seems to load in early, and use this as a visual guide to line up and go for the jump before things load in further. The more familiar you get with this segment, the more confident you'll feel running down this area enough to make it through the spot where you can jump down, rather than getting stuck up here climbing on the wall right there. Once you've leapt over the rail, you'll need to glide down here and take out this moblin and take its weapons. Be mindful to keep your camera away from the Liz Alphos on the right as much as possible, especially if you're playing with DLC installed. For the Moblin kill, you'll have two choices, Stealth or Stun. You can stun the Moblin with a headshot and grab the Royal Claymore behind him, and as he stands up, he'll be confused, giving you enough time to run up behind him for the sneak strike. If you're concerned about your arrow count, you can skip the headshot and quietly glide behind the Moblin, grab the Claymore, and very slowly walk up behind him for the sneak strike when you get the prompt. Make sure not to drop down from too high or move around too quickly because this Moblin is easily alerted when not stunned by the headshot. On your runs, it's usually down around here where you'll get the castle cutscene if you haven't already. Mash X and plus to skip through it as fast as possible and be ready to regain control of Link. Also, be aware that if you go for the Moblin kill and are interrupted by the cutscene getting triggered, the sneak strike may not take and the Moblin will be upset with you for trying to pull a fast one. But once the Moblin is down and you have the Royal Guard's Claymore, you want to head over to the stairs. Now notice these boxes. The far right box will always have a Razor Shroom inside. Amiibo runners can use it as a backup if you got poor fish scans, and no Amiibo runners can grab it for a longer time on their attack up meal, but don't necessarily need it either. If you go for this Razor Shroom, make sure to break only the box on the right. It's important to not break the other boxes because you need to save as much durability as possible so the Claymore can continue to be as strong enough to do what it needs to do when we get to the Blight's fights later. 
For a small but easy to implement time save, you can jump after swinging to cancel the rest of the animation, and then climb up this little spot here where the stairs are broken on the side, Link climbs up that spot faster. Now, head up the stairs and manage your stamina by throw sprinting and regular sprinting only. Do not whistle sprint on the stairs. There's a tiny little spot here where you can get away with it, the Lizalfos won't notice you, but I'm just gonna say for the purposes of this tutorial, do not whistle sprint on the stairs, stealth only, stay as undetectable as possible. But if one of the Lizalfos should happen to notice you, you can distract it by jumping and dropping a bomb behind you. And if you have to do this, it'll affect your runes menuing a little bit as you switch between bombs as you're approaching the corner here to blow a hole in the wall. Typically, when starting out, you'd throw a circle bomb at the wall and switch to squares immediately after detonation and then run through the opening towards the treasure chest. This chest contains three ancient arrows and they'll be extremely handy when facing calamity. And as your ancient arrow acquisition text box cutscene is playing, you can pre-turn your camera to face back outside because we're running right back out and to the right up the stairs. There is another Lizalfos at the top, the same one from the Copium route, and now we want what it's got. Simply sprinting up the stairs will make enough noise that the Lizalfos will question what's going on, but you can also do a quick whistle sprint to alert him a little bit sooner. You'll see a question mark appear above his head. When you get to about here on the stairs, throw the bomb into this corner. The Lizalfos will see it, go after it, and you can run right up the stairs behind him for the sneak strike kill at this point. Make sure not to run too far forward or you may miss the Lizalfos if it moves. If you throw from too low on the stairs, the bomb will hit the top steps and not be seen and roll back down. And if you throw from too high on the stairs, the Lizalfos will actually see Link, which you'll know by the yellow exclamation point above its head. If it sees you, it may get distracted by the bomb and forget about you, but you'll have to create a little bit of distance between each other so the game kind of forgets that it saw you. When it's down, you want to take the boomerang for sure, and the shield as a backup if you want it, because if you miss parry in the fights and you don't have a shield to finish through Calamity, it's pretty much a dead run. There is a shield in the Sanctum with Calamity, but it doesn't hurt to have a full collection when just starting out. After killing the Lizalfos at the top of the stairs, get away from the blast radius and detonate the bomb. Aim upwards with your bow towards this torch to light an arrow, and press B to cancel the shot so Link puts his arms down but is still holding the bow. Walk over here and this will light a fire under the cooking pot so you can cook your attack up meal. Choose your ingredients by first pressing X to enter selection mode and then moving over whichever fish or razor shrooms and pressing A to select them. Exit out of the pause menu and once you see the prompt to cook, throw everything in the pot and cancel the cutscene with X. This is where the two castle routes split for a bit depending on whether you go with only three ancient arrows or take a quick detour to grab three more. The six ancient arrows route loses approximately 20 seconds, but having the extra ancient arrows makes the calamity fight later much easier and faster. Also, the six ancient arrows detour doesn't require any out of bounds movement while the three ancient arrow route does. So six ancient arrows is typically recommended for beginners, but we'll start with the three ancient arrows explanation because there's a beginner friendly strat for that too. And I've also linked a super helpful Google Doc resource in the description to further help you decide which castle route is best for you. To finish the castle with only three ancient arrows, we need to do a scope clip out of this room through this window, very similar to how we did at the Shrine of Resurrection at the beginning of the run, but a little bit easier. You can pre-turn your camera like this while your meal is cooking, but it can make the climbing up the ledge a little bit awkward at first. You can also forward jump attack onto this corner of the ledge, or just climb high enough and then press B. When Link is standing on the ledge, start holding ZL as you tuck Link all the way into the corner while simultaneously turning the camera like this. Holding ZL will keep him from climbing up the wall. And reference the mini-map in the corner and put this white piece right here, right above the 5.15am, right about here. This is somewhat lenient. Once the camera angle is set, the last thing to do is to let go of ZL and get Link in position by facing all the way into the corner, and I like to look at the front of his hair and how it's pointing towards this corner. The front swoop should be right on or a little to the left of this thicker line here, and when you're ready, Press R3 once and Link should clip right through and this takes you out of bounds to a spot where there's no floor so you've got to pull the paraglider quickly to keep from falling too low. Now there are two ways to get all the way up to where we need to go from here. 
The proper way is to do a mid-air wind bomb by orienting Link with a quick throw aim in this direction by pressing B, R, and then X in quick succession, and then performing a standard mid-air wind bomb. I really don't recommend this trick for beginners because it's so deep in the run and one tiny mistake is definitely either another reload screen to sit through or a dead run. You must first be comfortable with standard front hop wind bombs if you're going to pull off a midair. And for more information on how to build amazing wind bomb skills, I've linked Vavo's basic wind bomb guide in the description, which dives deeper into wind bombs than we have time for in this video, including two ways on how to perform the midairs. Fortunately, there's an alternative to the midair wind bomb called the water elevator. The water elevator is significantly easier, but also slower, which basically will wash out all or most of the time save from doing three ancient arrows over six. So the only real reason to use this strategy is as training wheels while you're building your midair wind bomb confidence until you eventually transition to using the midair. To ride the water elevator, after the window clip, turn the camera and fly link in this direction towards this white silo looking structure in the distance here, and align Link with the left side of it. If done properly, you'll soon glide into some water textures, and because Link cannot swim underwater in this game, if you ever come into contact with water, it always pushes you up towards the surface, which in this case acts as an elevator. As soon as you hit it, stop moving forward and take it all the way to the top, and you can turn the camera around and swim out this way paraglide over to this area here, and drop down just a bit, only enough to just get out away from the water, which doesn't extend out this far or this low, and then fly this way towards the landing spot here. If you've managed your stamina properly, you should have plenty to make it over here. Now you've got to do a wind bomb up to Zelda's study. And this one can be a little bit tricky because if you drop the circle bomb too early, it'll roll down the hill, so be aware of that. But other than that, it is just a standard front hop wind bomb. To perform this one, stand on this patch of rock right here, throw aim your top and bottom reticles to align with this left edge of the structure in the distance over here, and then do your standard front hop wind bomb. If done correctly, you will launch Link right inside the box here where it looks like there's no floor. You can pull the glider when Link is at the apex of the launch, or just let him ragdoll inside the box here. You should switch to square bombs now before you clip back in bounds by crouch walking into the rubble in this spot and then uncrouching here, similar to how you clip into the stasis elevator. You have to move fast to take advantage of this second moblin in this next room around the corner. Run up to this spot and throw the square bomb at the back of this couch to distract the moblin. When done properly, the bomb will get trapped between the moblin and the couch and keep him in place while you go in for the sneak strike kill. As soon as you've struck the moblin, unequip the royal claymore and unequip your bow. Now, before I go on, let's go over the six ancient arrows detour since this room here after killing the moblin is where three ancient arrows and six ancient arrows meet back up. And for more coverage on what can happen in this room on the three ancient arrows route, again, Tapir's castle video spends a good amount of time talking about this moblin and the wind bombs that it takes to get up here. To run six ancient arrows, after you cook your food, head down this hall and jump over the malice wall by jumping at this pillar here with full stamina doing one side hop over here, and then holding down and B to jump away from the wall, and then pressing X to paraglide over as much of the malice on the other side as possible. Once you're past, preferably still with at least two and a half hearts of life, go through this door on the left. If you have at least three arrows, you can shoot another one at this eye of malice over here on the left, and if not, throw a bomb at it, and having at least two arrows when you get up to Zelda's study in a moment with the second moblin is preferable because you'll need a minimum of six or seven in the fights, and six is really pushing it. Now, run to the right and open up this chest behind the rubble, where you'll find your second pack of three ancient arrows, and another opportunity for a backup shield if you want. Run up the spiraling staircase you just unblocked and make your way up here to the left and quickly set up the standard front hop wind bomb by standing right here on the seam on the edge of this ledge and throw aiming slightly to the right of perpendicular to where you are facing Link. This will launch him closer to where we want to go. It's also super important to turn the camera up or down as much as possible before detonation to reduce the lag of these castle wind bombs. Once airborne, mash B and X to pump the glider as you fly over this higher walkway, which leads to Zelda's study. 
to kill the second moblin from this position, shoot an arrow right at this crack on the floor to distract him and glide down behind for the sneak strike. Again, as soon as you hit him, unequip your royal claymore and your bow, and if you're left with only one arrow after this decoy shot, you should go pick it back up as well after the moblin is dead. Now the six ancient arrow route has met back up with the three ancient arrows route. It's time to pick up the last of our supplies and head into the fights. So grab the Moblin's Edge of Duality, move away from the bomb and detonate it for the three Ancient Arrow, but six Ancient Arrow runners should also make sure that the square bomb is cleared because sometimes it may not despawn after the wind bomb you did to get up here the way square bombs usually do when you wind bomb, so be mindful. Then swap to Magnesis and pull down the Royal Guard's bow off the mantle, and finally pick up the five pack of arrows for a total of at least seven. If you're still low on arrows, you're guaranteed one more random elemental arrow in one of these pots over here, so just go break them if necessary. And after you've done all that, you're ready to go to the boss fights, so start heading this way for your final wind bomb. Menu to circle bombs and run up this wall using the crack. This makes this climb up a little easier on your stamina wheel. Come out onto the bridge and climb up onto this first tooth of the side wall. If you need a bit of extra time to set up your wind bombs or you're nervous, you can wait a moment to run out onto the bridge to let the guardian pass. Now, aiming perpendicular like this will launch Lynx directly into the tower ahead of us. So position him just off of perpendicular, either to the left or the right. To the left will pass you closer to the sanctum entrance, but with a few obstacles along the way, whereas sending him to the right will send him a little further away from the entrance, so you'll have to run inside, but there will be less things in the way to mess up the ragdoll launch and the paraglider pumping. The final thing to do is to set up wind blight skip by shooting an arrow at a very precise spot and then immediately triggering the cutscene to start the fights. Because you can damage enemies during the cutscene in this game, the arrow will get stuck in Windblight's headshot hitbox and damage it enough to kill it before you have anything else you need to do. You want to use a regular arrow and your Royal Guard's bow for this. There are many setups on how to do this and I'm going to teach you the 4 hop setup because it's super consistent. To perform Windblight skip, run over to this wall, hop up onto it, and while holding ZL, you can immediately press B to drop back down. You only want to grab onto this wall to set Link's angle. To set his position, continue holding ZL and press Y to take out your claymore and tuck Link into this corner. Just wedge him into it. Now, you want to press Y to start a swing with the claymore, but in the middle of the swing animation, start holding to the right and press X to do a side hop. The reason why we swing the sword is to buffer out the side movement on the control stick out of the inputs so to ensure that Link does not take any steps to the right. We only want him jumping. Then do another swing and jump to the right again up the stairs. Then do a swing backflip jump and then finally do a swing left side hop. Now you want to aim the exact center of your crosshairs at this spot right here. This is a super precise shot, so understand that it'll take some practice to build confidence in. When you've lined up your shot, you need to press pause and don't let off of ZR until you do. Then, menu to your cooked meals menu, and as soon as you've eaten your meal, hold forward on the control stick and press B to exit the pause menu. It's important that you only press B, do not hold B, as holding B will have Link sprint in the cutscene, which is slightly faster and could potentially mess up your setup. Pressing B and holding forward will have Link jog into the cutscene trigger. As the cutscene fades to total black, the castle split ends. In the next video, we'll talk a little bit more about the Windblight skip, but it's really going to be all about learning the routine of fighting well with limited resources from here on out, which can be crazy and frustrating until you get it all down, but that's what we're here for. And I know we went over a lot in this video, so if you have any questions, please ask them in the comments below or in the Breath of the Wild speedrun Discord community. The link for that is in the description. Leave a like on this video if it helped you out. It's super appreciated. It helps me out. And subscribe for more content like this. It's all free. It all helps other people find the content. It all goes a long way. And if you want to watch me doing live attempts to grind my personal best as low as possible, you can catch me on Twitch where I'm currently speedrunning this game four nights a week, Monday through Thursday. I'd love to see you over there as well. Link for that is also in the description. And until next time, stay well, stay cool, and always keep punching out there. Aloha.